Auspicious greetings to all Dhamma friends around the world. Thank you for tuning in to a new episode of Fo Guangshan English Dharma Services. My name is Zhi Tong, and for today's episode on Introduction to Buddhism, we will be looking into the Bodhisattva practice of the Six Perfections. One of the terms that you often come across when learning Buddhism is Bodhisattva. What is a Bodhisattva? Who can be a Bodhisattva? How to be a Bodhisattva? What do Bodhisattvas practice? These questions are important to our Buddhist cultivation. First, let's look at the question: What is a Bodhisattva? Let's examine the word bodhisattva. This Sanskrit word has two parts, bodhi and sattva. Bodhi means to awaken, and sattva means sentient beings. A bodhisattva is a sentient being who seeks awakening. But bodhisattva doesn't stop at seeking awakening for themselves. In that process. They are also actively helping other sentient beings to attain awakening. In other words, bodhisattvas are beings who benefit both self and others. Looking at this definition, we now proceed to the next question: Who can be a bodhisattva? The answer is, you can. Everyone can be a bodhisattva. Anyone who aspires to help themselves and others for self-betterment, self-awareness, and self-awakening is a bodhisattva. So, how can we become a bodhisattva? First, we need to give rise to the bodhi mind. What is the bodhi mind? A bodhi mind is the vow to strive on the path of, to Buddhahood, and secondly, to liberate all sentient beings. A person who has given rise to the bodhi mind has given rise to compassion when seeing sentient beings in suffering. Thus, they vow to liberate all sentient beings. But since every being has different aptitudes and characters, a bodhisattva needs to be equipped with many skillful means to reach out to them. This is why a bodhisattva vows to practice the way to Buddhahood to gain merit and wisdom. Therefore, no matter man or woman, young or old, anyone who has given rise to the bodhi mind can be considered as a bodhisattva. You, too, can be a bodhisattva. Now that we have understood the who and how of a bodhisattva, let's discuss the cultivation of a bodhisattva. What do a bodhisattva practice? What cultivation do they uphold to gain merit and wisdom? One of the main cultivation is the six perfections. The six perfections are also known as the six paramitas. What is the meaning of paramita? There are two ways to look at this Sanskrit word. The first interpretation separates the word paramita into parami and ta. Parami means perfect. And ta is similar to the English suffix shen. This is how we get the English translation perfection. The second interpretation separates paramita into param and ita. In Chinese, paramita is translated as going to the other side. In other words, crossing from the shore of samsara. To the other shore of liberation. The six perfections are six practices of a bodhisattva, which will ultimately lead to the perfection of Buddhahood. They are practices that carry us from the shore of suffering to the other shore of enlightenment. The six perfections are generosity, precept, patience, diligence. Meditative concentration and prajna wisdom. In this episode, let's look at the perfection of generosity. The first of the six perfections is the perfection of generosity. 
Generosity is one of the fundamental practices of Buddhism, and you can see generosity as the first of the many methods of cultivation, such as the threefold fortunate karmas, four means of embracing, and of course, the six perfections. As Venerable Master Xing Yun said in his book, of benefit to self and others, giving is the first step in caring for sentient beings and also the basis for the liberation of sentient beings. Just like Maslow's hierarchy of needs, basic needs such as food, water, and shelter must be fulfilled before people can attend to their higher needs such as esteem and self-actualization. In the same way, Buddhism talks of different types of generosities, and they are number one, the giving of wealth, number two, the giving of dharma, and number three, giving of fearlessness. Let's look at the giving of wealth. Monetary donation is usually what comes to mind when talking about the practice of generosity. But money is only one kind of giving that we can practice. There are two types to the giving of wealth, the, the giving of external wealth and the giving of internal wealth. So what is the giving of external wealth? For example, when we give money, clothes, Material objects, houses, and even lands are considered as the giving of external wealth. What about the giving of internal wealth? For example, the giving of blood, organ, bone marrow, and even life are considered as the giving of internal wealth. An Australian man by the name of James Harrison is known as the man with the golden arm. For 60 years, he has been donating his blood until the age of 81, which is the maximum age a person can donate blood in Australia. James pledged to be a blood donor after recovering from a major chest surgery when he was 14 years old as a way of giving back. Since his life was saved by blood transfusion during the surgery, a few years after his surgery, the doctors discovered that his blood contains a unique disease-fighting antibodies that can be used to develop an injection named NTD, which helps to fight against rhesus disease. Rhesus disease is a condition where a pregnant woman's blood actually starts attacking her unborn baby's blood cells. In worst case scenarios, it can result in brain damage or death for the babies. After discovering this, James Harrison switched over to donating blood plasmas and continued to do so on a weekly basis until the age of 81. It is estimated that he has saved 2.4 million Australian babies. Won't you consider James Harrison as a great bodhisattva who gives what he can to save the lives of many babies and also the happiness of many families? Next, let's look at the giving of Dharma. The giving of Dharma encompasses the offering of the Buddha's teachings as well as knowledge and skills that can improve people's life and develop their wisdom. This is why the offering of Dharma exceeds all offerings. Let us first look at the giving of knowledge or skills. This is to impart beneficial skills or knowledge to other people. For example, doctors sharing their teaching and their medical skills with each other so that more lives could be saved. Another example is when someone imparts a livelihood skills to others so that they can have an income source. Wangari Matai, the winner of the 2004 Nobel Peace Prize, 
and also the first African woman to win the Nobel Prize, saw that the ecology of a native country, Kenya, was destroyed by commercial plantations. The effect of ecology destruction was first felt by the primary caretakers of families, such as wives and mothers. When it became more and more difficult for them to find firewood, clean drinking water, food, shelter, and also income. Wangari initiated the Green Belt Movement that teaches women in rural Kenya to plant trees that not only combat deforestations, but also restore their main source of fuel for cooking, generating income, and to stop soil erosion. Since Wangari Maasai started the movement in 1977, over 51 million trees have been planted and over 30,000 women have been trained in forestry, food processing, beekeeping and other trades that help them earn income while preserving their lands and resources. Isn't this a great giving of knowledge and skills? What about the giving of the Buddha Dharma? As quoted in the Diamond Sutra, the Buddha said, Subhuti, suppose a person gives a quantity of the seven treasures equal to all the Sumeru mountains within a 3,000-fold world system. If another person were to use this Pratnya Paramita Sutra, even as few as four lines of verse, and receive, uphold, read, chant, and explain it to others, his merit would be an incalculable number of times that cannot even be suggested by metaphors greater. Material donations are used up very quickly. But if we were to give the Buddha Dhamma to others, it could enrich and transcend people both spiritually and mentally for a lifetime, and even many lifetimes. This is why the greatest giving is a word or a sentence of the Dharma that inspires faith in others, for it can be a catalyst that inspires them to practice Buddhism, let go of their afflictions and sufferings, and ultimately attain enlightenment. Last but not least is the giving of fearlessness. Session beings have many fears, for example, physical fears such as hunger, cold or pain, and mental fears such as weariness or sadness. The giving of fearlessness is to alleviate the fear and worry of others and acting with a sense of righteousness so others are no longer afraid. In the Universal Gate chapter of the Lotus Sutra, the Buddha describes how Avalokitesvara Bodhisattva gives fearlessness to all sentient beings. Good men, if there be countless hundreds of millions of billions of living beings experiencing all manner of suffering who hear of Avalokitesvara Bodhisattva and call his name, with single-minded effort, then Avalokitesvara Bodhisattva will instantly observe the sound of their cries and they will all be liberated. The giving of fearlessness means to give safety, security, peace and joy to everyone in society and let there be no danger, no fear, no suppression of people and no unjust situations. This is why the giving of fearlessness is the greatest giving of all. When we practice generosity and giving, we might find it easier to give away things that we have less emotional attachments and very difficult to give away things that we really like. The practice of generosity is like weightlifting. At the first try, Perhaps you can carry a load of 5 kilograms, but slowly, with practice, you find yourself able to carry 10, 20, 50, 
or even 100 kilograms. If one were to carry 100 kilograms in the first try, one might be scared off from this practice and never return again. Therefore, give what you can to the best of your abilities. For example, the giving of wealth. The Buddha advised us to use 40% of our income to take care of our business ventures, and 30% to take care of our family. 20% should be saved in the bank, and 10% for charitable endeavors. The Buddha did not ask us to give all that we have to others. But to make good planning and good judgment on our ability to give. However, it is vital that we should also give with wisdom. Do not give in to requests that go against the principle of Buddhism, of not harming or injuring others. Remember, we give to benefit, not to harm. As we continue practicing the perfection of generosity, we may find that we can let go of our attachments to our possession, wealth, and even to ourselves. The practice of generosity remedies our greed. It is a cultivation of having less desires and attachment. Gradually, we find that we can be content even with the simplest things. And that our lives are fuller because of the good affinities we have formed with other people. How can we be mindful of giving in our daily life? We can think of giving in terms of our three karmas: our physical, verbal, and mental karma. The three acts of goodness, as advocated by Venerable Master Xingyun, is a good way for us to be mindful of giving. In doing good deeds, we can volunteer our time, effort, professional skills, and expertise to different people and different communities. For example, helping up in a soup kitchen or volunteering in after-school programs. As for speaking good words, speak words that give others confidence and boost their morale. Moreover, praise and support people around us. You never know if your one word of kindness can help someone out of a rough patch. What about thinking good thoughts? When we see someone doing an act of giving, we rejoice in the generosity of others. Furthermore, the easiest giving is simply your smile. Smile when you meet someone, even on the street. Your one smile may brighten someone's day. And especially yours when they smiled in return. Generosity is a practice that we can do at any time and anywhere. Perhaps you might wonder, what do we get in return after practicing generosity? In the book of benefit to oneself and others, Venerable Master Xingyun poses the question: Is giving for oneself, or is it for others? It appears to be for others, but it is actually for oneself. Giving can liberate a person from stinginess and greed, and lead to wealth. The practice of generosity not only removes our greed, it also increases our affinities with others, as we form connections with more people around us through acts of generosity. Forming good affinities with people is the first step towards the path of Buddhahood. In Buddha Dharma Pure and Simple, Venerable Master also said, "Generosity is not all about money. Forming affinities such as sincere praise, a compassionate mind, a nod, or simple greeting, and a helping hand are all ways to give joy and happiness to others." These warm and beautiful moments in life are far more meaningful than monetary giving. To recap, let's ask ourselves these questions again: What is a bodhisattva? A bodhisattva is someone who vowed to liberate sentient beings and to attain Buddhahood. 
Who can be a bodhisattva? Anyone can be a bodhisattva. How to be a bodhisattva? To be a bodhisattva, one needs to give rise to bodhi mind and compassionate mind. Last but not least, what do bodhisattva practices? The bodhisattva practices the six perfections, which are generosity, precept, patience, diligence, meditative concentration, and prajna wisdom. Have you met a bodhisattva in your life? Please leave a message in our comment section and share your experience. That's all for this episode. Next week, we will be discussing more of the perfections. Thank you for listening. Amitwafo.